Okay, good evening. <clears throat> Welcome to Prog Monster. My name is Murph. I am the host of this show. Sorry, I got a bit of a frog in my throat here. <clears throat> so today we're doing the series that we've been running, which is Rock Greats Who Have Thrilled Us But Has Since Passed On. This is episode 26 from 1989. So, <clears throat> 89 was a bit of a year that there was a lot of people here that really wasn't very familiar with. So I had to choose... I decided to choose two people who either did something that was notable or I had some interest in learning about. And so I chose um, the first guy will be uh, Ron Lee Wilson of the Safar Safaris. He's the one that is famous for doing that wipeout video drum, wipeout drum solo. So it's which just become synonymous with learning to play the drums, right? So anyways, uh, Ron Wilson, Ron Lee Wilson was born June the 26th, 1944 in Los Angeles, California. And he died May the 12th, 1988 at the age of 44 in Placer County. Yeah, Placer County, California. Uh, I'm just going to take my uh, glasses over here because I'm probably going to need them at some point. Um, he played for, it was basically surf music was the type of music he played, and he was <coughs> a drummer, of course. So, um, he's most notable, uh, pretty much notable for his drum solo um, in the song Wipeout, which is basically an instrumental. It was actually, it was a B-side for, for a single they put out, and they needed to put something on the b-side so they put this song called wipeout which was his practice this is what he practiced to get in get ready for his drum for drumming for the uh when he, they were in concert so uh but it became famous you know i remember it was one of the first drum solos i ever listened to you know, everybody tries to play it at least once. And then they were notable, too, for uh, the band, the Safaris, for when they were in concert, they would uh, often invite people up on stage to try and play that drum solo. <laughs> kind of funny, actually. So anyways, he died, um, like I said, on May the 12th, 1989, of a brain aneurysm. That's my second aneurysm in two nights. Anyways, uh... Not much else to know about him other than that's what he was famous for. He is not the same Ron Wilson who um, did some writing with the Beach Boys with uh, Brian Wilson on a couple of uh, songs. This, they're not they're not related. They're on, and so he's not that guy. So, anyways, that's Ron Wilson of the Safaris. Now the second guy, a little bit more involved. Uh, I'm going to probably pronounce this wrong, so I'm going to look at it for a second, and then I'm going to try and get it right. Uh, John Cipollina. Okay, so he was the guitar player for a couple of notable bands, but first we'll discuss his um, vitals here. I'm going to move it up closer so I can see it. The page is kind of folded a bit. August the 24th, 1943 was the year he was born in Berkeley, California, sorry. He died May the 29th, 1989 at the age of 45 in San Francisco, California. Uh, music, his music was rock uh, and psychedelic rock. Um, his instruments, of course, was guitar and vocals. And he was active from 1964 till 1988 when he passed. He does have a couple notable things with his family. First, his he has a twin sister, Manuela, uh, who's born obviously on the same day. Um, and he also has a brother, Mario Ciparella, who uh, was the bass player for Huey Lewis and the News. So, a little bit of a family influence. His mother... And his godfather, uh, respectively, Evelyn and Jose Tutrilli, uh, were both um, concert pianists. So he comes by his music fairly naturally, I think. He, uh, uh, what else? Uh, 
he was part of the originally part of a band called Quicksilver Messenger that uh, started in '68 and kind of broke up in '71, but did have some other albums that came out after. I think he probably didn't return to the band, so he may not be on the later albums. I didn't really see anything about them too much, anyways. Anyways, they released six albums. Um, dating from 68 through to about 75 I believe and then he when he left the band in 71 he um, he formed another band called Copperhead with another earlier Quicksilver member named Jim Murray uh, both guitar players and then Copperhead disbanded in 1974 but basically Copperhead was um, him on guitar Gary Phillips on vocals, um, second guitar, and some organ. Jim McPherson on vocals, organ, and bass. Pete Sears on on piano and bass. And then later, and oh yeah, David Weber on drums. Uh, later, Sears left the band and was replaced by Hutch Hutchinson on bass. Um, so he died of uh, what they call Alpha-1 antitriaspin deficiency not really sure what this is i asked a couple people they really, really didn't really tell me what it was i really didn't understand it so anyways that he had a bit of a smoking issue and this of course apparently aggravates this deficiency and then he died from it um, when he was 45 i believe yes 45 he was um the other notable thing is that he um, he was uh, being a member of Quicksilver and Copperhead got him a bit of notoriety. Uh, Rolling Stone has him had him down as their number 32 all-time greatest guitarist in their top 100, but I really don't hold much water to Rolling Stone. They sometimes have like some people up there that I I don't really get. And then some other people are completely missing from the list who I think are in the top, should be in the top 10, not alone missing from the list. So I don't really hold much water for Rolling Stone magazine. So there you have it. John Cipollina, uh, guitarist for Quicksilver Messenger and then later for Copperhead. He did do some other stuff with some different individual artists as well. Um... I got to listen to a little bit of his stuff. He's he's a pretty decent guitar player, you know. It's not really my style of music, but um, I was interested in learning a bit about him because I had heard a few songs from Quicksilver Messenger and then one song from Copperhead, so I thought it would be nice to kind of put a face to um, the music. So there you have it. It's a bit of a shorter episode tonight. Um, I will give a few honorable mentions. I need my glasses for my tiny handwriting. I don't know why I write so tiny when I'm, when I'm the one that has to read it. Kind of scary that way. Anyways, we have uh, Whistling Alex Moore, uh, Paul R Roby, who played for the Platters, uh, Vincent Crane, Atomic Rooster. There's another band I was interested in learning a bit more about. Mickey Hawks, from uh, who's a bit of a rockabilly stable. Irving, and of course, Irving Berlin, how could you miss him? One of the great um, music writers of all time. And Steve Wurrer, uh, Wurrer, I don't know if I'm saying that right, from The Trashman. So there you have it. Um, rock, great to thrill us, but has since passed on. Episode number 26. Moving right along, that's the end of the 1980s. Boy, we've moved through the 60s all the 70s and now all through the 80s coming up next will be the 90s so that this episode will air tomorrow morning tuesday and that episode will air thursday morning so again i hope you like this and and, and enjoyed the video and subscribe if if you can um and uh there you have it so this video will come out like i said in the morning and then there'll be another one on thursday so I look forward to seeing you again soon, so Prog Monster out. Bye.